For his first day at university, Vladimir wore his bowler hat, black bow tie, carried an umbrella, and his only suitcase. When he arrived at our room, I opened the door, and he looked at me for a moment, then walked inside to survey our room. He lay his suitcase and umbrella on the bed, tested the springs, and then turned around and came back to shake my hand. I told him my name, and he told me his. I mispronounced his name, and so he corrected me by saying, no, Vladimir. We didn't speak for the next two weeks as we both settled in. And then one day, to break the silence, I asked him what he was going to study at college. He said, I'd like to be a spy. A few months later, he disappeared, and his disappearance has been the subject of much speculation. But I'll share with you what I know. He never went to any classes. Instead, he spent most of that full term teaching himself how to spy. He would go to the library and borrow every book on code making and code breaking. He would read all about secret ink and secret signals and secret pockets he could sew inside his jacket. And then one night, as I was going to brush my teeth, I found a message which said, this is the first of my practice messages. After that, no matter where I went, Vladimir was around the corner, on the way to class, in class, the messages were usually in some code I couldn't understand, but he became quite good at finding me, even in the strangest of places. Soon Vladimir felt that he was ready to try real spying, but the only problem was that he wasn't sure where to go. The ones who wanted to be doctors would intern with doctors. The ones who wanted to be lawyers would intern with lawyers. But Vladimir couldn't exactly intern with a spy. So he went to a professor who got upset. He went to a dean who thought he was joking. He tried his senator's office. They were no help. He called the FBI, who told him to try the CIA, who kept hanging up on him. The embassies in London laughed. France scoffed. And the Germans said they didn't do that sort of thing now that the war was down. So Vladimir went out on the streets and would approach people he thought might be spies. He gave them a card which explained where he could be reached. But eventually he stopped. Stopped handing out cards, passing me messages. He started to talk more to make some friends. I think he even dated a girl. And then one day, Vladimir picked up his suitcase, his umbrella, and disappeared. There was nothing left in our room, no trace anywhere. Now rumors spread, of course, that Vladimir had in fact become an international spy. Others thought he had just taken a long vacation. Some said he would wind up in Hollywood, and a few reported that he had been killed. I didn't know what to do. I thought perhaps this was part of his practicing, but I was worried. So I left a note in one of his usual hiding places. It simply asked where he was. A month went by, and then another month, and then finally one day I found the reply. No, Vladimir. That's all it said. And it was the last I have ever heard from him. These days, I spend my time watching over different sorts of codes. But wherever I go, 
I always think that Vladimir is lurking behind a corner somewhere waiting to pass a message. It's been quite a few years now, but still no Vladimir.